question what is the highest power of x which can divide n factorial so what is the highest power of x which can divide n factorial and we'll take many situations let's say pair x is equal to 2 n is equal to 100 so what do we mean to say by this question 100 factorial first let's try to understand the question what is the highest power of 2 which can divide factorial 100 that's what we want to find we already done that so what we want to see here is 100 factorial equal to when we factorize it what will be the power of 2 here that's what we need to find i think we already done, done that thing uh, it is 97 from the previous thing that you can see or if you have to do it, just divide 100 by 2. It is 50. 50 by 2, that is 25 divided by 2, which is 12, divided by 2, which is 6, divided by 2, which is 3, divided by 2, which is 1. So go on dividing till the time there is a possibility of division. And you get whole numbers. Add these numbers and you are going to get 97 into so many other things. Okay. So uh, highest power of 2, which in which can divide factorial 100. If I say x is equal to 3, n is equal to 100. Right? The question could have been what is the highest power of 3 in n 100 factor? Right? So I'll, I'll keep writing this. Uh, your power of 2 in 100 factor. Similarly, power of 3 in 100 factor. So this is one type of question. I think we have already done it. That is, uh, what was the power of 3? It was 3. So there would be other factors, but 3 would have a power 48. And so on. That we have already done. If we do it once more, 100 by 3, that will give us 33. 30, because it is giving us 33.33, we'll take only integer number. By 3, that is 11. By 3, that is 3. By 3, that is 1. No further division possible. Add all of them. So 33 plus 11, 44. Plus 3, 47. Plus 1, 48. Okay. What is the highest power of 5 which can divide factorial 100? Power of 5 in factorial 100. So, power of 5 in factorial 100. What do you do? The answer is 24. You already done that? Okay. What is the power of, highest power of 7 in 100 factorial? Right? So, power of something in some factorial. Alright? Okay, so here power of 7, I think we uh, concluded it, it was 16. Okay. Now let's make some combinations of this. What is the highest power of 6? Let me put it this. Highest power of 6, which can divide factorial 100. Now what do we do? One of the very common mistakes that people do is to divide 100 by 6. So let me come, let me repeat. When we divided and found the number of multiples, that was only for a prime factor, not for any other number. Huh? Just be very careful. That you have to do only for a prime factor. Now 6 is not a prime number. So to find the power of 6, we cannot divide 100 by 6. So what do we have to do? Let's try and see that 6 is made of two prime factors, 2 and 3. 6 is made up of 2 and 3. We have already seen 100 factorial or we can again calculate it is 2 to the power 97 and 3 to the power 48 and so many other things. Here to make a 6 I need a pair of a 2 and a 3. Pair of 2 and a 3. Okay, it's like let me call 2 a boy. Okay, and 3 a girl. Alright, this 100 factorial is a class classroom. So that means this classroom has 97 boys and 48 girls. So how many couples of a boy and a girl can be created from this? If you try and see uh, valid couples, okay, uh, couple uh, containing a boy and a girl, no two boys, right? Only a boy and a girl. So if you see that, there are 97 boys and 48 girls. Alright, so a boy and a girl, a boy and a girl, if you go on doing that, when will the possibility of creation of pair will finish? When you have completed 48 pairs, because this is less of 
So beyond a point in time, the girls will get over. Boys are still there. That doesn't matter anyways. Now come back to six and focus on two and three only, not the boy and girls. Okay. So if you take out two and you take out three. So from here, you keep taking the pairs of two and the three. Keep on multiplying them, you'll get a six for every pair. Okay. So how many pairs you can create? The complete full pairs you can create, that would be only 48 in number, not more than that. After that, what will happen? 3 will be exhausted, so there is no more 3 here. Okay, so no more 6 possibilities are there. The possibilities for 6 are there, that means it's 6 raised to 48. So what was the question? Highest power of 6 that can divide 100 factorial? The answer would be 48. Please try and understand that. So to create a 6, we need a 2 and a 3. Or you can say a pair of 2 and 3. Okay. So as many pairs of 2 and 3 can we get from that 100 factorial, those many or that will be the power of 6 which will divide factorial 100. Okay. Let's say for the highest power of 12 in 100 factorial. Now let's see. Now how is 12 created? 12 is still not a prime factor. 12 is made up of 2 square into 3 or if I, if I elaborate it is 2 into 2 and a 3. We already have 100 factorial as 2 raised to the power 97 and 3 raised to the power 48 and other things. Okay. So how do we go about it now? How do we go about it? Let's see if I have 2 raised to the power 97. So how many 2 squares can we create completely? Because I need a 2 square to create a 12. So how many complete 2 squares can be created? So divide 97 by 2, it will be 48. Because 97 is 96 plus 1. 96 is 48 into 2. So 2 square to the power 48. And there will be a single 2. And then 3 to the power 48. Wow. To create 12, what do we need? We need a 2 square and a 3. Understand and listen very carefully. I am saying, how many 2 squares? If I say this is one item, how many this item we have? We have 48 2 squares item in this. And we have 48 threes in this. So if I go on creating pairs of two squares, so we take one, we pluck two square from this, we pluck three from this, and we keep them together. So this is one pair which will yield 12. Such pairs, how many of such pairs can be created? 48. This entire thing will be exhausted, this entire thing will be exhausted. No three remaining, and there's only one two remaining. So no further possibility of power of 12. So this is 12 to the power of 48. So answer that question was 48. So highest power of 12 which can divide factorial 100 times will be 48. Highest power of 18 which can divide 100 factorial. So 18 still not a prime number. So what we do is we break 18 into its prime factors. 18 is 2 into 3 square still 2 and 3. So we have 100 factorial is equal to 2 to the power 97 into 3 to the power 48. So how many 3 squares are there? So 3 squares will be exactly 24 in numbers. So 3 to the power 48 head, that means it can, be, it can be broken as 3 square to the power 24. So what do we have here? We have 2 to the power 97 and 3 square to the power 24. Now create a 18. To create an 18, we need a 2. And in, we need a 3 square. So go on making the pairs. Take 1, 2 from here. Take 1, 3 square from here. So how many such pairs can you create? 24. So what is the highest power of 18 which can be, which can divide 100 factorial? Answer would be 24. What is the highest power of 24 in 100 factorial? Do this now. So 24. What is 24? 24 is 2 cube into 3. Right? So 100 factorial, we already know it is 2 to the power 97 into 3 to the power 48. And see, understand, several other things are there, but they are not required for this question. Okay. Now, go. now to get 24, we need a 2 cube. So we need to check how many 2 cubes can be created from this. So if you divide 97 by 3, you get 32. So it is 2 to the power 3 to the power 32. And 32 into 3 is 96. That means there will be one single 2 will be there and uh, will, will remain there and 3 to the power 48. Now if you go on making the pairs of 2 to the power 3 and 3, check how many pairs can you create. I think you can very easily see that it is only 32 pairs that can be created. After that 2 will get exhausted, still 3 would be there. 
and odd 2, a single 2 would be there which is not capable of creating 24. So it is 2 cube into 3 and the power 2 to the power 32. So it is 24 to the power 32. So the highest power of 24 which can divide factor 100 is 32. What is the highest power of 10 in 100 factorial? Now, this question is the most important. Actually, you can say that the entire background was created for this particular question. What is the meaning of highest power of 10? Highest power of 10 means the number of zeros in the product. Highest power of 10. See, understand. When there is a 10 as a, as a factor of any number, that means there is a zero in the end. Think about it. When I say 3, 5, 35 into 10, so it is 350. When I say 35 into 10 square, so it is 3500. When I say 35 into 10 cube, it is 35,000. Alright, so whatever is the power of 10, that is actually the number of zeros. Okay. So this question could have been rephrased. Find number of zeros at the end of numerical value of 100 factorial or decimal value of 100 factorial or simply the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial. In most of the places it would be simply end of 100 factorial. Okay. End of 100 factorial. These two are same question. The number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial or power of 10 in 100 factorial. The same thing. Now how do we calculate this? To create a 10, what do we need? We need a 2 and a 5. In 100 factorial, what is the number of 2's that we have? 2 to the power 97. And what is the number of 5's that we have? So now we ignore, ignore everything else and we just consider these two, which are necessary or important. Yes. So if I go on creating pairs of 2 and 5, how many pairs of 2 and 5 can be created? As you can see, only 24 pairs can be created. Hence, number of zeros in 100 factorial Number of zeros in 100 factorial is just 24, that's it. Number of zeros in 100 factorial is only 24. Exactly 24. After that, 5's will get to get over. 2's are still there, but to create a 10, we need a 2 and a 5. Now, especially for this situation, for 2 and 5, you can see always the number of 2's will be higher or the power of 2 will be higher. Power of 5 will be smaller. Always it will happen for any factorial. It will happen any, for any factorial, I am not saying any product, I am saying for any factorial this is definitely going to happen. Okay. So for a factorial, you only need to count the number of fives, you don't even need to touch two because number of twos will always be more than five. In fact more than double. Here it is almost four times, yeah, it is little more than four times. It will always be more than double, that is for sure, that you can just see by two and five. Two ka double hota hai, four. Four se bhi zada hai five, so in fact double se bhi zada hoga. So we don't have to bother about twos. Alright, so now onwards you can make just one simple rule that in a factorial to find the number of zeros you just find the power of 5 in that factorial. Okay, I will put a note here, number of zeros, number of zeros at the end of a factorial number of zeros at the end of a factorial is equal to simply the highest power of 5 highest power of 5 in that factorial ok but this is only for a factorial in other cases what will you look for you will always look for both 2 and 5 but in case of factorial only you can just look at the power of 5 that will be the number of zeros also Alright, so if I just simply say find number of zeros at the end of, let's see, let's take up some situations, 12 factorial, 12 factorial, you just need to count the number of 5's, just count the number of 5's, so I say number of 5's, okay. that is equal to number of zeros, and how do we count the number of 5's? Just 12 divided by 5, so it is 2. So 2 zeros. Alright. If I say 25 factorial, it 
is 25 divided by 5, 5. That is 5 divided by 5 again. So 12 mein, there is no possibility of division again. 5, 25 mein, there will be a divisible, uh, there will be a possibility of division again. So 5 plus 1, that is 6 zeros. So 25 factorial, when you expand, you get a very large value and there will be 6 zeros in the end. Let me say 50 factorial. So 50. Remember, you have to find the number of 5s. You know, you just count, uh, don't do it like just counting the uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, no, no, not like that. There will be more 5s, like right? 35, 25. Right? So you have to count everything. So just count the total number of, total power of 5. So 50 by 5, that is 10. 10 by 5, that is 2. Add this 10 and 2, so total 12. So 12 5s, hence 12 zeros. Now, one tricky situation. 49 factorial. Some people will say that only 50 will go away, so just one zero. No, no, no. When you say 50 goes away, 50 is a multiple of 25. That means 5 square goes away. So two zeros will reduce from 50 factorial to 49 factorial, two zeros will reduce. So the answer will be 10. Or the safest would be 49 divided by 5. That will be equal to 9, 9 divided by 5. That will be equal to 1. Alright, so 9 plus 1, which is 10 zeros. 125 factorial. 125 factorial, it will be 125 divided by 3, that is 25. Sorry, divided by 5. 25 divided by 5. 5 divided by 5, that is 1. So total will be 25 plus 5 plus 1. So there will be 31 zeros. Okay? Then 200 factorial. Though we have already factorized all these numbers, you can do it again. The more you practice, the better you become. So 200 divided by 5, that is 40 divided by 5, that is 8 divided by 5, that is 1. So 40 plus 8 plus 1, add them, you get 49 fives. Hence 49 zeros in this number. Alright? So this is how you can, you can find the number of zeros in a factorial. What we have to do is just find the number of 5's. To find the number of 5's, what do we have to do? Divide the given number by 5. Get the quotient. If it is more than 5, divide it again by 5. And go on doing that till the time there is a possibility of division. Then whatever quotients you have got, add them all. That will be the highest power of 5 in that factorial. Hence, that will also be the number of zeros at the end of that factorial. So number of zeros is straight away highest power of 5 in that factorial.